Hey, what's up, everybody? This is the one, the only, Mark and Spencer. Back once again, folks. I mean, this is a special edition of Soccer Review 2012 for October, or for November 1st, 2012, after a f phenomenal um, Halloween. And Halloween was good. Gave a lot of candy. It was pretty interesting. But the one thing that's kind of sad is to see that superstore Sandy Hoist left some major destruction in the East Coast. Uh, America and some parts of Canada. It's actually heading up here into Canada real soon, so um, you know it did some real damage. You know, lots of flying debris. Some people did die very sadly here. But you know those people pull together. They work together. They help one another. They try to get rid of some of the water. They teamed up. You know sometimes when people step it up, they do what they gotta do, and no good things are gonna happen. You know, I've over the years I've seen some people step up. They show their leadership. They show what they're all about. You know, I, hey, I might not have the greatest leadership, but hey, when people show up and they, you know, they do what they gotta do to help people out. You know, getting to a hospital, getting people to another building, or you know, evacuating people, um, helping the old lady out. She can't move. You help her out. And that's those are what you call the real heroes. It's not just your fire department, your military, you know, all those other things, you know, police, whatever. It's the, it's the average people helping out one another. Those are the real leaders, you know. <laughs> There's no doubt. There's no doubt in my mind. So, let's get down to soccer. Football, the world's game. And we got a big game today between the White Caps and the Los Angeles Galaxy. Uh, this is going to be a big game. You know, this is a big game. It's going to be live from Los Angeles, uh, Home Depot Center. Um, you got some good storylines going into this. This is the Vancouver Whitecaps' first ever big playoff game in the MLS. Uh, this is huge. This is bigger than his, their A-League days. So this is a national stage. Um, it don't get better than this. Prime time playoff, a one-game playoff. Next team moves on to play San Jose on Sunday. So... We'll see what happens. I think the keys for this game, watch out for LA Galaxy. They got their guys. They got Beckham, Landon Donovan, Juninho, and they have a pretty good goalkeeper. And when you're looking at the Whitecaps, their big key has to be Kenny Miller. Man, they pay this guy a ton of money. Same thing with Barry Robson, but you know, Barry Robson's not much of a goal scorer. It's pretty much Kenny Miller. And Darren Maddox, the young Jamaican. I mean, this kid from Port Moore, this kid knows how to play. Has lots of character, lots of belief. Knows what he's doing out there. This has to believe that he can make a difference. And I think that's what it comes down to. You have to believe you know what you're doing out there. And I, and I feel when it comes down to it, and believe me, I've seen a lot of games over the years. You can't get me wrong. I mean, I've seen lots of games. <laughs> and you feel that, you know, you feel that you know for a fact that certain teams are going to win. And in the end, they lose. You just wonder why they lose. So it's going to come down. It's going to be a toss-up between the Galaxy and the Whitecaps. I think Whitecaps could pull this one out. I think they could pull this one out 2-1. That's my guess, 2-1, because uh, you never know. Um, Houston Dynamo won yesterday in their game uh, against Chicago Fire. So they move on in the competition. Um, I think they won 3-2 yesterday. So, I mean, the MLS is getting interesting. This is their playoff time. This is their big time of year. Uh, so, this one should be a big game, no doubt about it. Um, should be on television tonight on TSN in Canada here. and In the States, it's going to be on, I think, NBC or maybe ESPN, probably. One of the two. Probably NBC. Uh, Sports Network. So, it's going to be a big game. A uh, big game for David Beckham. I mean, this is where he makes his money. This is why they pay him the big bucks. Deliver. Win championships. And that's what it's all about. I mean, winning is what it's all about. And now we go to Europe. This is where... The big teams in the world play. You look at Real Madrid. You look at Barcelona. You look at Valencia. Teams in the La Liga. Uh, these teams have been struggling. And one team has really su surprised me this year has been Malaga. I mean, they're one of the richest people in the world own that team, but he doesn't really care for the team. But recently, I was reading that transcript, and he said, you know what? He's proud of his team. He's really proud of them. Because when they beat AC Milan, he said they, they, they did very good. So I think Malaga is the team you gotta watch out for in the La Liga. They might push um, Barcelona this year more than any other team. Uh, I mean, you have teams like Real Batiste there, uh, Valencia, 
But I think more than Real Madrid, Real Madrid is like in fourth or fifth right now or sixth. And I, I, I honestly, if you want my honest opinion on this situation, I like Malaga. I mean, Malaga is a team that could maybe win the La Liga this year. I feel they have the talent, and if they go spend some money in the transfer window in January, they could really, I mean, really, they could really do some major damage to this team. So we'll just have to see. You know, we never know. Anything's possible, put your mind to it. Anything is possible. Anything still is possible. So watch out for that team. I think rest of the year, you got to keep your eye on them. They look really good. They played awesome football of late. They have some real big names on that team that have got the job done. And they, they've, they've shown true character, true belief, and their abilities. So let's get down to the Premier League. The English Premier League. I mean, it's been an up and down season for a lot of teams. Chelsea's on top. You got Manchester United and Manchester City chasing them. Um, you got Arsenal down in fifth spot right now. Amazing. Well, that's what happens when you sell off Robin Van Persie to to Manchester United. And they should have never sold them to that team. They should have sold them to AC Milan or PSG, especially AC Milan. I mean, if AC Milan had uh, Robin Van Persie, my team would be back in the game. Right now, they're just fighting tooth and nail just to stay in the top flight of Italian football right now. So, let's anyway, move back down to Manchester United. I mean, Manchester United versus Chelsea. They're supposed to be playing in a big game today, a cup game. It's in the Capital One League Cup. Um, this is a big game, no doubt, for both teams. They were taught they were going to play a lot of their young players for this game, but now what I hear, they're going to be playing all their veterans for this game. So, it should be... So, we'll see. You know? Um, you never know. I mean, the game of football, you know, it has lots of stories. It has lots, there's a lot of things that we, the fans, we take for granted. But, you know, one thing the game of football is, it's, it's transparent. And when you see teams like Manchester United, Manchester City play, and Chelsea, and teams like Newcastle coming up, playing the way they've been playing, West Brom and Chalbin playing the way they've been playing, playing with lots of confidence, lots of belief, Swansea City playing a new brand of football you haven't seen in years, Michael Laundrup, one of the greatest football minds, every one of the greatest footballers of all time. I mean, it's been a phenomenal year in the Premier League. We've seen a lot of great stories. Teams like Redden coming in there, playing good. I mean, they got to a 4-1 lead against uh, Arsenal, and Arsenal came back and beat them in League Cup, beat them 7-4. to An amazing feat for Arsene Wenger. I mean, he's just playing great football. I mean, you don't even wish he'd do that in the Premier League in a cup game. <laughs> it's amazing. But, you know, I think guys like Lucas Podolski, um, Drew, uh, Olivier Giroud, I think those guys are going to come through for them this year. I feel um, injuries and, you know, etc., etc. is going to probably hurt Arsenal. But, you know, if they're going to win the Premier League, I mean, everything has to come together. They need a goalie, for one. So, Slicini is not the best goalie in the world, goalkeeper in the world. I feel that's the same problem that Manchester United is going to have. They might not ever win the Premier League again because De Gea, I just don't believe in De Gea. I don't believe in Lindengard. They need a goalkeeper. They need a couple new defenders. Vidic, I don't think, has any traction anymore. Real Ferdinand's kind of burnt out. He's burnt. He's burnt out. I think he's tired. He's not much more than a 30-minute player now. He can't play a full 60 minutes due to all the injuries. And, you know, he, he's getting up there in age, of course. Well, we all get up there in age. But I just feel, of all the injuries he's had over his career, I feel that they need to bring in a great central defender. Um, uh, one of the big moves I saw during the offseason was Manchester City bringing in Mykon. I mean, that's the type of player I think Manchester United need. They need a player like that. A player can go end-to-end, -end, great offensively, and not the best defensively, but he's still good enough he can get the ball out of play. I, I feel a player that Manchester United should bring in at transfer window is maybe someone from Inter Milan, another player, Walter Samuel. I think 
Walter Samuel would be a good fit for um, a, a Manchester United. Um, or even the player from Borussia Dortmund, Supertic. Um I don't think Borussia Dortmund would ever let him go, but he's a young, up-and-coming central mid, central, central back, center back that's coming up as one of the top, um, top of the line, basically top-rated players in Europe in terms of central or she center backs. So I feel if Alex Ferguson's serious about winning this year. At the transfer winner, get a goalie. I mean, a really good goalkeeper. And get a cent- center back. I mean, if he can get those two pieces, they have a good chance of you know, winning the title this year. Um, but I just, I don't think they're going to win it this year. It's going to be a toss-up. Could be Chelsea. Could be Manchester City. I, I even throw in a wild card team that you guys would probably just lose your mind. Everton. There's a team there... They've been playing some good football late. Just recently, they tied with um, Liverpool in the old Merseyside derby. Um, and they've been playing really good under David, David Moyes. You know, David Moyes has been there for a long, long time, folks. And Everton, you know, they haven't won a title in years. I mean years. Going back to the 80s. This, that's how long it's been since they won a major title, you know in England. So I I'm, you know, I like Everton. I if, if there's one team that could come out of nowhere and probably win the Premier League, it's Everton. I, I just feel that they have something there. They don't have the money like all the other teams have to spend and get the best players. But they have something there that it's confidence, it's belief, and they have something that's called team, teamwork. They have that thing that makes everybody, everybody on the team go. Work hard. Do what they got to do to win. That's what they got, folks. That's what they have. They have the desire. They have the passion. And they have the belief they can win. That's what's going to take to win the Premier League this year. You're going to see teams like Newcastle. You're going to see teams like West Ham. They're going to have their struggles. They're going to have a tough time staying in the Premier League. But I think Newcastle will be all right. West Ham will be just, just fine. Queen's Park Rangers, they're on the chopping block. Um, unless they start scoring goals, they got one of the best goalkeepers in the world in Julio Cesar. He's not playing like it right now. He's really playing bad. He needs to find his confidence, and the team needs to start scoring goals. There's no doubt in my mind. They have the talent there. I mean, what has happened to Bobby Zamora? He used to be one of the up-and-coming great superstars of English football. I mean, he's one of the t- most talented Englishmen ever to come out of Fulham. And when he goes to the Queen's Park Rangers, he just can't score a goal, period. And you look at Drew Belsisi, one of the most talented French players ever to play the game, can't even score a goal. Sean Wright Phillips, one of the more talented, creative playmakers, can't create a play. I mean, these guys need to get it going. I mean, these are high-priced, played, paid players. They need to start earning that paycheck. And Queen's Park Rangers, if they're going to stay up, they got to start scoring goals. They got to play for their manager. Mark Hughes is taking a lot of heat, a lot of pressure. He's under a lot of pressure. His job's on the line. He maybe has another month to go. If they don't start winning, he's gone. So, and they might bring in another guy. I don't know. I hear rumors of Harry Redknapp. Um, I hear rumors that he might go be coach of a national team. I think Canada should hire Harry Redknapp as their new coach. Um, coach for the team, uh, Team Canada. So, uh, but you know, never know. I think Harry Redknapp might end up back in the Premier League, and don't be surprised is with with Queens Park Rangers. Um, Blackburn just recently named a new manager, a former Norwegian player. Um, so, uh, hey, anything's possible. Anything still is possible in the world of football. And then we move to the Bundesliga. Uh, Borussia Dortmund. They just continue to roll. They're scoring big goals. Lewandowski's been getting it done. All the other players on the team, Gunnitz, all these guys, Supertic, they're all been playing good football of late. The manager on that team's very happy with this team. I saw him in an interview he's saying that they're doing very good. We just got to keep it going. They're trailing Bayern Munich and stuff in the standings. Bayern Munich's on top, no doubt. We got Ritter Bremen down there. They're doing all right. Um, Stuttgart's done pretty good this year. Bayern Leverkusen's played very good this year. Um, you know, we've had some teams that have stepped it up, you know. Borussia and Mojo, Gladbach haven't been good this year. I mean, they've had some teams, that, but they've had some surprises. I'm, I think, Einreich something. 
Yeah, Iron Rates. Yeah, I think it's Iron Rate. They've been awesome this year. They've been up in the stands. I think they're like fourth or fifth this year. They're in Champions League position or Europa League position. So um, it's, it's, it's been interesting. You know, and then when you go to the Serie A, you got Milan, you got Inter, you got Juve, you got Roma, you got Napoli. Uh, you got all these teams all fighting to be number one. Uh, Napoli lost a tough game yesterday. Milan tied against. Um, uh, uh, who did they play? Uh, yeah, don't worry. I'll figure it out after. But yeah, they, they tied the game they played. And then you had, um, actually yesterday, um, Inter Milan played. They won 3-2 over Sampdoria. Um, Milan played the day previously, and they tied their game. And then you had teams like Parma played very good of late. They beat Roma recently. Uh, you know, you have teams like Juve. Juve won 2-1 over Bologna. Um, uh, Lazio tied. Uh so, you know, we've you had some teams that have been surprises in the Serie A this year. You have had some teams that have been disappointments in the Serie A this year. And one team that hasn't been a surprise to me has been Juve. They've been still consistent without their manager, who is still suspended. He probably won't be on the manager of the team until next year. So, um, he they've done a very good job. I mean, the match-fixing thing is still around in Italy. Um, you know, Fabio Cannavaro, I hear, has been linked to some of the match fixing thing. Uh, it's pretty sad. I mean, you don't like to hear any match fixing uh, scandals in, in football anywhere. You know, you hate when they fix matches, but it, it does happen, folks. It does happen. It's big money, big business. And uh, I just kind of wish and hope someday it just leaves the game altogether. Because we, the fans, the supporters, we want a game with no cheats, you know? It's like taking steroids, like the Lance Armstrong situation. We want a, a clean sport, you know, I, I believe in that. But sometimes you might need, you know, just that little bit of something to make you better than you really are. And that's what it is, you know? So, well, that's all I got today, folks. Thanks for watching the Soccer Review for November 1st, 2012. Mark Spencer saying so long. Take care. And remember, folks, it's the game. Just play the game fair. Play the game as a team. Play the game as a family. And remember, you just got to go out there and have fun. When I was a kid, when I used to play soccer, I just went out there and had fun. I only played one year of soccer. And I was baseball most of my life. But I remember when I was out there and played, I just played for fun. You know, I'd play for fun, recreation, whatever. All you kids out there, just go out there and have fun, you know, all ages. Just go out there and have fun. You, know, you don't have to beat up the next player to, to be the best player in the world. You just got to go out there and help out your teammates and help out yourself become a better player, a better person. And that's what it is in the end, folks. Just be you. In the end, when you're yourself, there's no one that can get on you. Because it's up to you, man. And yet, it's you, man. The world does revolve around you. And you are the star of your own movie. Remember that. Just keep playing, you know, until it ends. So let's keep it going, folks. Remember, it's up to you. We'll see you in the future. And keep watching the Soccer Review. They're always positive. And you fans on YouTube, you are still positive. On Facebook, you're positive. And the world, you're positive, too. A special thanks to Google. special thanks to YouTube. A special thanks to FIFA. And the whole soccer, football, and community. And go white. Right